Not everybody who comes to church belongs to the team. Let me tell you, I was sent a video by one of my daughters, who is a minister. And that video is about a man of God who was jailed in Nigeria for what he did not do. It's yesterday. He was arrested. He was locked up for nine years. I think Pastor Shegu, you are president of uh, is it law school? You were a lecturer in law school. Good. In Nigeria, we will talk. And I, I will be writing Professor Ni as well. That's the head of law in Unilex. There are things that have come to my heart many years before, but this story made me know that if I don't do something, woe we'll be time in. What brought the man to detention for nine years? The general Vasya lied against him. Okay? And that general Vasya's lie brought him to detention. And here he had evidences. Went to him, begged him, family went, held his leg, begged him, and yet he refused to forgive. Somebody who did not sin, but alleged back to sin. There are much in it. When I heard it when we were going home yesterday, I could not sleep. I was asking God, what is going on in the church? Yeah? It seemed as if the whole world came to an end. When I heard the story of this man, who just gave about five months and they deprived him of his, of bringing up his, his, his child for nine years. Excuse me. I say, God's chosen, not all of them who come to church are chosen of God. So I asked the Lord, I want to see the archives of this man of God. And that's the journey I'm on now. That is the journey I'm on now. The Lord will take me into it. No, you know, I'm not saying say amen. I'm just saying, I'm just telling you, you know, what that should do to you is that where if a person can see this, I have to know that I need to book up. I mean, I, I, we do investigation, we go to the father and tell the father what's going on here, what's going on here, what, you know the secret. Keep asking, asking, and then he will tell us. He will tell us. Many are standing, but they are dead. Many call themselves believers, but they will be forced foundation of hell. Don't be partaker of their iniquity. Am I talking to you? Yes, sir. The chosen of God are not just who said, I am a Christian, but those who do the will of what? The Father in heaven. Isn't it? And if you do the will of the Father in heaven, you will pray day and night. Come on now. Buckle up your shoes. In the month of June, we will seek God day and night. Somebody say amen. amen. Satan will not shut your mouth. And, and apathy and laziness will not shut your mouth. Amen. We will call on God day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Not just praying where you are going out. Father, I'm going out. Be, be, take care of me. No, he has already taken care of you. Leave that alone for him. You will seek the face of God. Every hour that passes and your mind remembers him, you seek his face. You said it in that music. Put that song for me. He, is that the beginning of it? Here I'm waiting. So you wait. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Let us prove to the world that the Bible is true. That is the reason why you live. That the world will know that the Bible is true. That is why we are alive. If we cannot prove the Bible true, we have no reason to live. After salvation, we should have been taken home. 
But the reason why Jesus allowed you to live after salvation, he said, let your light shine among men, not among ghosts. He didn't say shine in heaven. On earth here, we will shine. What people dare not to, the, the heights people dare not to get to, we will pass it. Am I talking to you? Beloved of God must call on their God whom they love day and night. Talk to him. Let me say this to you. You know, where we want to pray, we kneel down to pray, isn't it? We can walk and pray as well. We can keep our mouth shut in the tube and we are praying in our mind. You don't have to go to the tube and your mouth is moving. All the people who do that, come on. They are not praying. They are just Pharisees. Am I talking to you? Someone will be in the congregation. I think if I see anybody like that here, I will call Dr. Ajigini or Dr. Palmer or Dr. I know to come and treat that person. Hallelujah. You can open your eyes and pray. You can focus on somebody and pray and arrest the spirit in that man. You must carry prayer in your heart every hour to the place you are by when you are dozing away, you are praying in your dozing. So how can you have nightmares, tell me? Saturate your mind with God. You said, here I'm waiting. Lord, I'm longing for you. Hide me in your love. Bring me to the, my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. And the chorus says, come live in me. As the Father live in you, the Son of God should live in me. And also I in him. Excuse me, will God be right if you don't think of him and he's thinking of you? God will not be right. He will not be right. If you think about God once in a day, and God didn't remember you but once a day, is that a balance? Is his balance? Because if you want God to remember you all the time, tell me how many times you have remembered him in your operations today. In your thinking today, how many times have you thought about him? So if you say that God is not hearing you, no wonder. No wonder. Oh, I can't hear God because when he was speaking, you are not thinking about him. You are not listening. But this is what we have said. All my life, you take it over. All my life. Are we in agreement? Yes, sir. I will finish probably about 10 minutes, and we pray. Because today is Saturday, but nevertheless, is the first of the month. How will God not answer those who cry unto him day and night? He said, will he keep putting them off? Will God keep putting you off? If you have been praying and said to me that I've been praying, I didn't hear from God. God didn't do it. Because you didn't pray. The prayer that does not come from your heart, the prayer that does not come from your heart cannot be heard on high. Someone is praying with the, the lips. Your mind is wandering all over the whole place. And he came, hey, yes, Father Lord. I mean, what kind of God do you treat with such content? If you want to think about something else, don't pray. Think about it well. And then change it by your thinking. You want to think about a problem? Leave God alone. Let your head be thinking about the problem. So when you now recognize that you want to talk about God, block your brain from that problem and just talk to God. It's not when you are praying, your mind is wandering somewhere. You think those things are natural? They are from demons. Because they know that if your mind wanders, heaven cannot hear you. Even your prayer didn't go, even this ceiling of this church, you didn't, didn't reach there. Because when you are praying, you are thinking of something else. Everybody is praying. You are praying. But between the prayer that you are praying, your mind is not there. When they say, in Jesus' name, your mind come back. Don't you think that that is not it's strange? It's the demons that do that to us. But how can you pray with your heart? It is by taking God serious in your heart. 
am I talking to you? Every human mind is prone to everything that other human mind are prone to. But some of us block it. I can't explain to you, but I can tell you. I can't explain to you. I don't know how to explain this. Maybe some of you may be able to, to explain it. When you are worshiping God, my mind travels to the spirit realm. Because... I have educated myself to look at the spiritual behind every physical thing. Even to my discussion with you. Now, if I'm talking with you, or you are we are talking naturally, the moment you are uttering spiritual words, I know it. You may not be conscious, but I recognize it, and instantly I switch on. Let me tell you, you are talking to somebody, and somebody, you know, you know, not natural stuff, and he began to tell you about his problem, that has been a stigma that has not been, he has not been able to overcome. You recognize that it's now spiritual. It's no more talking normal. This is not we are going to, to listen, and how shall we read literature? No. He's talking about a problem. Even he may not know why he's saying it then, at that time. But he's talking about a problem that is not surmountable. And if you are a spiritual person, instantly you know that it is Holy Spirit that is speaking through him for you to look at what can be done about this issue. And so wisdom must call for wisdom. And it's because you set your mind to gain understanding. So also when we say we pray, if you cannot shut your human mind so that you can pray with concentration and concentrate on what you are praying on, then you cannot get more revelation about what you are praying about. It's not that God is not revealing. God is revealing many things, but you are not concentrating. That's why you wouldn't get. Am I talking to you? Yes, sir. You know, the attitude of telling us to kneel down when we are praying or to bow our hands to the ground when we are praying, why are those instructions given? It is because when you, are, you engage your physical body in your mind action, it concentrates your mind more to what you're looking for. You know, you are before God. I'm not talking about sleeping, okay? When you kneel down sometimes, you are praying. If you have overworked yourself in the day, you can't find yourself sleeping. What I will not accept or tell you or agree with is, you didn't do anything in the day, and then we are praying you are sleeping. That's demons. That's demons. You have no legitimate reason to sleep, isn't it? You have no legitimate reason because you have not been actively engaged. But because if they, if they are talking about Labour Party and Conservative, you will not sleep. Isn't it? You will tell us what the latest news about the two, two heads of the... And you can say it for one hour. And they say that we pray. Prayer in the church. Maximum three minutes. Five minutes, you go to another prayer. Even if I'm the one drilling you as Sergeant Kolofu, and I begin to drill you to 15 minutes praying, just to get you more into the active of warfare, activity of warfare, you know, and you find yourself, uh, ah, if you succumb to that sleep, something is wrong. You are supposed to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And your spirit will jump up again. Amen. Your spirit will jump up again. Am I talking to you? So don't you think everybody, everybody has been a victim? Even the disciples. That's why they told Jesus Christ that, you know, the spirit is willing. Jesus said to them that the spirit is willing to be a flesh. I mean, I know that. Because these guys, we climb part of the mountain they climb when we went to Israel. I tell you, you climb that mountain, you'll be tired. Okay? But what I'm telling you is this. Inculcate the attitude of talking to your God every hour. And when you have the opportunity, kneel down when that opportunity is availed you. But other times, you may not be able to kneel down. When you are able to open your mouth, when people are not there, open it. But when people are there, shut your mouth and pray with your heart. Am I talking to you? So that people will not think that you are insane. And Jesus said, in his closing sequence here that, if this woman can be so daring, how will God not? So it is impossible for God not to hear you. God will hear you this month. 
Let me say this to you. A number of you, a large number in this house, have encountered God in various ways, and I'm very happy. All right? I don't think anybody who comes to CFT and follows what I'm saying can ever say, God, don't answer me. Because if anybody says that God didn't answer him, I will tell him the last time God answered him, if he stood before me. Yes? If anybody said to you, I pray, 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 God the answer. Yes? You know the question you ask them. You tell them that God will answer you now. If you say, how? Who gave you the mouth with which you are speaking? There are some people God gave mouth, and they cannot utter a word from that mouth. By God. It's in the book of Exodus 3. God said to Moses, when it was rattling, who gave you mouth to speak? Is it not I, God? Who made you to stammer? Is it not I, God? I thought some people would say it's demons. No, God can do anything he wants to do. And he said, because you, are, you, have a, you, are, you, are, you have a disability, that is why I want to use you in the area of your disability so that you know it's not your power. It is I, God. Am I talking to you? So this month, we want to prove the word of God. You call upon him day and night. And finally, look at God is willing, if you are willing. So the first scripture, Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Ask, it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Present continuous tense. He who seeks finds. And he who knocks the door shall be open to him. Hear me. In this month, you will seek God and you will find him. You will knock and God will open the door. You will ask God and he will answer. You will discuss with God and his holy angels. In Jesus' name. This is the month of signs and wonders. God is waiting to hear you this month before you read this month. He has been waiting for you too long. You will jump on the boat of God and hear him. You know, he says, whoever asks, whoever seeks, and to him who knocks. The second scripture, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, God will if you will. He says, chapter 33, verse 3. Shall we read it together? Let's read it again. Do you understand that scripture? Say, if you can call to God, what do you say? I will hear you. I will answer you. God said he will hear you. God said he will answer you. So what do you do? Call. 999 is there for anybody who die. If they attack you and you say, hey, hey, my head, oh, my father, my mother, the people who are trying to break your door, they will break your door. Really, if they break somebody's door and they say that you are just say, hey, hi, they will see more than what they will have stolen. Where you have telephone in your hand and somebody is trying to force your door to open in England, what do you do? Nine, nine, nine. Isn't it? And some other place, they give them one, 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 whatever they give you. For Christianity is 333. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call upon me. Call upon me. I thought you knew it. Call upon me, he says. Call upon me. Call upon me. So anything I want, call upon the Lord. Call upon me in everything. You know, this is a campaign they are doing, our, our, our contestants. Another. You know, when I, when I listen to them, I call upon God. That the one who is lying, Lord, expose him. The one who will do it, God, expose him. You know? In everything you call upon God. And God will surely, he will surely, I say he will surely answer you. But bonus, he will show you. Visions will come. Revelation you will receive. 
Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15 says, Sacrifice thank offering to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Promise by God. And you will what? Honor me. So God wants to be honored. That's the reason why the deliverance of God is waiting for those who call upon God. It's not that when you call him, then God is coming. No, no. He has provided it. Once you call, you download deliverance. Once you call God, you download his deliverance. You call God, you download his answer. That is what it is. That's what it is. Don't let anything detract your attention from this man. Sacrifice, thank offering. Those of you who God did something to and you came to thank God, you are a candidate for more. I didn't hear you say amen. amen. God did you something. You came to thank him and testify. Did Jesus not say, are there not 10 lepers who were healed? Yes, he says, he only this man, Samaria, who, Samaritan who came, one of them. And he said to that Samaritan, there's something different in you and them. They were healed, but you are made whole. There are two different things. You can't ever have sickness anymore. But for those ones, they are healed of this one, another one may come. Because they know how to thank God. So if God had done something for you, if you are ashamed to testify before men, Jesus says he'll be ashamed of you before his holy angels. That is just prima facie. Now, you will receive whatever you ask. Write it down in the name of Jesus. It's an undertaking by Jesus. You will receive whatever you ask in the name of Jesus. You know what we are talking about is God will if you will. God is willing if you are willing. It says, John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. The first one, God said, and that, you know, you, know, you will honor me. God, God will, God will answer you. That's Psalm 50, verse 15. God will answer you. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you so that you will honor me. Let, let that be your guarantee when trouble comes. That uh, trouble is nothing. I will overcome this one. Because God is willing to take honor. Am I talking to you? So the only thing is you, you call on the name of the Lord. And here too, the name of Jesus Christ. He says, I will do whatever you ask in my name. Come on now. So that the Son, Jesus, may bring glory to his Father God. You may ask me for anything in my name. And what did he say? I can't hear you. Say it louder. Now understand, in the book of Daniel, Daniel was praying for days, and the prince of Persia stopped his prayer in the heavens. I have told you, with Christians, it's impossible. Impossible. Because at that time, the name Jesus had not been given to mankind. Daniel was a God seeker, but we seek God through Christ. If he had known Jesus, if Jesus was the leader of Daniel, I'm sure that he will run every one of us race. Because if you can take that attitude of the Old Testament and the New Testament, everything will be happening to you. That's from God. Every great thing will be happening. You become an oracle. You understand? So, now, the difference between the old and the new is this. When you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, from where you are, a crater is open to the throne of God. That name, everything you continue to speak in that name, that name is the arrowhead taking it. No demon will stand. Because at the name of Jesus, everything is about Prince of Persia, Lucifer, name them anything. When they see a word coming with the name Jesus on top of it, piercing through the, they run for their lives. They run for their lives. They don't have to wait. If they do, I'm sure they will not exist anymore. Because Jesus has said it. Anything you ask in my own name, forget it. It's done. It's done. And at my name, every knee shall bow. You know, even you who is a Christian, demons bow before you because they see the name of Christ in you. The only thing they can do to you is to make you do things that are silly. Things that God don't, don't want. And then brag you. That's all they do. Are we getting it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you ask in the name of Jesus, he's gone. He's going to be done. Amen. And in this month, really today, you will see it. Amen. 
the name of Jesus Christ. And the last one in this lecture is, you need faith to receive from God. Prayer of faith of Elijah. I will treat it tomorrow. Because that is a volume on itself. But for today, we are going to stop at this. If you are willing, God is willing. Let's stand up on our feet, please. The first thing I want to do is to just thank God for this day. The day that the entrance into or the beginning of the month of signs and wonders, the month of June 2024. Lift up your voice. I'm going to thank God. Father, we bless your name. We glorify thee, O God. Thank you, Jesus, for this month of June. For the month of June. Yes, Lord. Thank God for the promises. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will answer you. And I will show you mighty things that you know not. Glorify the name of the Lord. Thank God, thank God, thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his honor. Thank God for his promises. And Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. The Son bring glory to the Father. So he will answer you. I say God will answer you. In this meeting, God will answer you. In this moment, God will answer you. There will be signs and wonders in my house. There will be signs and wonders in my church. Begin to make declaration about yourself.